Hey there everybody, welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to make cities using a very new innovative approach that involves one, geometry nodes for creating this kind of city block from scratch, and two, stable diffusion uh, to render this into a city. So just taking these blocks from the camera point of view and turning it into something special, okay? Uh, if you don't have dream textures installed, make sure you have it installed. So. Uh, first of all, we go to GeoNodes, delete everything, start off with a plane, and make that a GeoNodes object. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this plane into a bunch of uh, city block buildings. So, I'm going to start by making this a 2x2, two two. so I'm going to subdivide, so now you can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, kind of grates here. And what I want to do is I want to recursively and selectively subdivide. What does that mean? Sounds like a lot of words. <laughs> uh, what it means is we can separate geometry by a random value specific to the face. So here you can see it's selecting two of the faces. Uh, as I change the seat, it's going to make different selections. I'm going to make a selection. For that selection, I'm going to subdivide the mesh, so further subdividing, and then I'm going to join it with that which was not selected, so the inverted selection. So you can see we've taken the grid, we've separated away two of these, subdivided them, and then merged up back with the other side, okay? Um, and this can be turned into a node group, Control G, so that when we take this and apply it again and again and again, well, I guess uh, one thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this is also part of the node group, this random value, so it's uh, there every time. Now, every time we duplicate, it's going to recursively subdivide by making random selection, and you can get very granular with this. And this is the basis for a lot of effects to begin with. But you take this, you now extrude this mesh relative to individual and relative to a random height, uh, random value, and then you get a city block. And th that's enough already. Uh, if you want, uh, by the way, to make slanted buildings and get a bit more complicated, uh, we could do that as well. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. Uh, you take set position. We want to say offset this on the z-axis, uh, but selectively only for the top selection. So you can see it's only moving the top. And I want to say only do this for some of the buildings. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to multiply by a random value. And I want this to be a boolean, so it's only for some of them. So here's the before and after. And uh, to clean this up just a little, it's not going to do too much, but if we interpolate domain by edge, it's going to clean this up just a bit. So we get these uh, slanted buildings, uh, some other stuff, and not just insanity. Okay? Uh, you can control the proportion of that that this affects. Okay? Uh, you could get more specific with this and make it work a bit better, but I'm happy with this. So I'm going to go to the layout, and now we can add in a camera. So I'm selecting my camera, making it camera to view, and I'm just setting up our render scene. So what uh, perspective do we want to render from? Something like this. I'm going to make it a 512 by 512 image, which I'm not just doing for a composition, although that's part of the story. Uh, the reason that I'm doing this is that, and let's zoom in a little, uh, we're going to be using stable diffusion, and you want to make sure that the image size is small enough that it can run stable diffusion, dream textures, and also uh, it needs to be a multiple of 32, I believe, or 64. So in the camera, I'm going to get rid of all the backgrounds. So if I go to viewport display, I'm tripping, and you go to passer part out, or passer part tub, uh, you get rid of that, and now you can see the city, and now we do the Dream Textures. So make sure you have Dream Textures installed. I have a bunch of tutorials at this point about it. Dream Textures version 0 .0, 0 0.0.0.9, and make sure that you have the model with depth installed. That's very important, because now when we go to the Render tab, you go to Cycles, GPU, all this, you're going to see this Dream Textures tab. And this is a render pass, actually. So if I go to the Depth model, say this is, what am I looking at? I'm looking at city buildings, photograph, make sure that's spelled correctly. So I'm saying it's city buildings, it's a photograph, it's realistic. Hopefully that should, maybe uh, New York City could help a little. I'm just adding in a prompt of what it is that want to render. And for the past inputs, this is kind of the new thing. 
you want to make sure you have depth enabled. So, and also enable the Z pass. Uh, this is going to look at the depth information from the camera. So it's going to say uh, what's close and far away to the camera, and it's going to do a depth to image conversion. So um, let's see what we got so far. We're using the depth model, depth pass, all this, all this, all this. You can go to the advanced settings, control the sampling of the seed. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to finally go to compositing here. And you're going to now see we have a dream texture uh, slot. So I'm going to make sure this is what gets rendered and gets viewed. So this is a render pass. Okay. Um, okay. And make sure your Z is enabled. Finally, I'm just going to set my render settings to be 100 samples, nothing fancy, and let's render. So you can see here we have a city block, and it's now going to generate a stable diffusion output. And look at that. It's a, a city. <laughs> it, it literally just looks at your geometry. So here's our geometry, and it converts it into buildings. It's actually kind of incredible. Um, if we also have the seed for our dream textures, and by the way, you can also drive this with color if you have like a bit of textures that you're making and stuff like this. Uh, but if you keep the seed random, now every time we render, it's going to give us a different result. And yes, we could guide this even further to not be black and white. See, now it's a sepia image. Um, let's try adding it full color. and see what that gives us. So now we're at the, the realm of prompt creating, making the best prompt for the thing. Uh, but you can see uh, that does that. Now I wonder if we can get rid of the background. I haven't experimented with this before. I'd imagine if we go to fill transparent, it might help, or it might do nothing. So it's not actually part of the depth pass. We'll see what this gets us. It still seems to want to generate a background. If you do not want the background, I imagine what you could do is you can run a set alpha, and we do have this alpha pass. So you run that there. And now we have just the buildings. Although it's it's not going to be perfect. You can see there's a bit of a cutoff on these uh, things here. So I'm just going to give us the full image. And let's try. It might crash. Uh, but let's try bumping up the resolution to 1024. And this is also an, an, uh, a, not an example. It's an opportunity to bump up the... Um, the sample count as well. I am I am uh, predicting a freeze here. I'm going to give it a couple seconds. But um, as it does this, I guess I'll do the outro. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. I'm going to make the uh, blend file here, like the city generator. I'm going to make it available on Patreon. Um, so you can go to the link in the description to download that. Uh, but other than that, Dream Textures is taking the world by storm. I, we, we just made a photorealistic city in like a minute or two. So there you go. And it seems like a 1024 by 1024 was a bit intense. What we could have done is the 512 by 512 at a bit of upscaling. But either way, uh, that has been the video. Thank you for watching.